Hi, I'm Dad the Engineer. Today I'm going to cover why you probably need to throw away your router. Before I get to that, I'm going to ask you to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It would help me a lot, and I greatly appreciate the gesture. To back up for a second, I recently published a pretty popular video on zero downtime internet connectivity. Popular for me anyway. If you haven't seen it, you may want to, after all. If you're going to be in the market for a new router anyway, you should find out if you need one that supports multi-WAN. The link should be in the top right corner and in the video description below. I want to start with a little context, so you're going to have to stick with me for about 60 seconds of current events. It's not often that a company like TP-Link will be mentioned in normal news. TP-Link is headquartered in California, but was founded in China. It makes all manner of networking equipment and is a large player in the consumer and small business networking space. Oh yeah, and the company is being investigated in the US by the Defense Department because of possible state-sponsored exploits in their networking products. Did I say Defense Department? I meant the Commerce, Defense, and Justice Departments. In October of 2024, Microsoft released a report covering the origins, operational mechanisms, and impacts of Covert Network 1653. Covert Network 1653 sounds like an automatically generated Reddit name. Actually, though, it was a collection of devices that was used to steal Microsoft user credentials. This attack was orchestrated from within China, and it's unclear if the government was responsible. The report indicates that most of the devices were TP-Link routers. Based on a sample by Landsweeper, TP-Link may make up 12% of the consumer routers out there, but it looks like that figure may exclude the vendor-supplied equipment that many households have. There are all kinds of attacks that don't involve a router at all, but I'm mentioning the TP-Link example because it just highlights that the router is a common point of attack for all residential internet users. Since it handles your external routing, compromising the device puts an attacker on your local area network. TP-Link is suspected of baking in exploits or bot clients, but the exploits can be unintentional holes in code too. Because exploits are discovered regularly, your router and firewall are only as good as your vendor's patching and deployment practices. If they don't update the device's firmware when new exploits are found, it's time to find a new solution. If they stop providing new firmware altogether, it's time to find a new solution. I put routing solutions into four basic categories. Number one, make your own. This category is a bit outside of the scope of this video. There are plenty of ways to do this, but most of them involve getting a multi-nic bit of hardware and loading router OS, PFSense, OPNSense, or something similar. The hardware doesn't have to be particularly fast and will often just be an old PC, a small form factor PC, or a cheap 1U server. The benefit is that you can load whatever you want onto whatever you want. Most of these projects are open source so you can see exactly how the solution is built and they often have communities that do exactly that. Aside from that, these solutions often have packages or modules that can be loaded to give any type of capabilities that you would ever want. 2. Get along support cycle router firewall. These devices often have some headroom in their designs to allow for the size and requirements of future updates and features. Companies that offer this type of product tout them as an investment, often as part of a larger software-defined network ecosystem. They may still have a product range, from pretty cheap to ridiculously expensive, but the products in that range will support life cycles of three years or more. This is largely possible because the routing and firewall services are running on top of a device operating system concept, and so the core functionality of these services is the same throughout the product line. 3. Vendor Supplied Equipment This category covers whatever your internet service provider has given you. In many cases, your vendor will give you an all-in-one device that contains the connection interface, whether that's cable, DSL, fiber, cellular, or satellite, a router, and a wireless access point. These devices tend to be convenient because it gives you everything you need to make your connection useful out of the box, but these devices also tend to be completely awful because they don't usually contain a very good router or wireless access point. I almost always advocate for people to turn off the internal capabilities of these devices and instead pair it with a better router and wireless access point. If you don't want to do that, I understand. However, the basic premise of this video still applies to you. If you don't have a router that's actively being supported with updates, you are not adequately protected. If you insist on just using the vendor's equipment, just make sure you get a new all-in-one from them every 12 to 18 months. Generally, customers don't get replacement equipment unless something has stopped working, but you can request replacement equipment at any time. 4. Disposable routers. This category is a tough one, because it can have products in it that are quite expensive. Despite that, these devices are typically disposable, in that they have a design that is completely economized to the feature set delivered at launch. 
The processor, memory, and flash storage are all just enough for the task. Extensive and frequently refreshed product lines tend to cover up the relatively short amount of time that you can expect to receive firmware updates. ASUS, D-Link, Linksys, Netgear, TP-Link, TrendNet, and Zizel are among the companies that make disposable routers. Before you come for me in the comments telling me how great your disposable router is, I'll just point out that I didn't say your router was bad. It may have amazing performance. It could have an incredible feature set. It may have value that can't be beat. It can be all of those things and still be completely disposable. If it stops getting updates after a year or two, you have to throw it away after a year or two. Hence, disposable. To summarize, if you make your own router, you are counting on the efforts of a really dedicated community. The projects I mentioned are all really solid choices for excellent security and performance, but the router is also another device for you to actively maintain. If you're the sort of person that wants to build your own router, you're probably not watching this video. I used to be exactly that sort of person, and I've built many IPCOP and PFSense boxes. Now? Now I'm willing to give up a little control to get back some of my time. Now, I'm a person that buys a long support cycle router firewall. I have a Ubiquiti Unified Dream Machine Pro. Because I have a bunch of equipment sitting around, I could have built something for less money, but then it would have been a matter of checking to make sure everything I had was on the supported hardware list, or remembering what physical ports ETH0, 1, and 2 correspond to, or hoping that the new build doesn't break something that I already had working. No, now I'm content to buy a good solution in the interest of time economy, and to make the creation and maintenance of the solution someone else's responsibility. Buying a network appliance that will last for years, understanding that there will be a point at which I have to upgrade, suits me just fine. In the meantime, the hardware will be secured with regular updates from a solid vendor that's concerned about their reputation. Please note that some disposable routers can be set to download and apply the newest firmware. That's certainly better than nothing. However, you should understand that the lack of frequency of firmware updates may be a red flag. When the updates stop coming altogether, it's time for a replacement device. It's also worth noting that it's easy to buy a device that's been sitting on a shelf for a year or more. By the time you get a particular router, it may already be out of active support. Also, I understand the appeal of getting a $30 router when you just need to get something working. That said, I think it's hard to make the case that you aren't much better off finding an extra $50 and getting a Ubiquiti Gateway Lite for $79. I generally tell people to get a Ubiquiti Unify Express, currently $109, as an entry-level router firewall and wireless access point. As a side note, given the attack surface of your router, you should really use a password for it that is completely unique to that device. After all, if your router is compromised, how bad would it be if the thing can be made to give up a password that will let them into other devices on your LAN? As a second note, it's not uncommon to have other pieces of networking equipment that could also be suspect. I don't mind having a generic managed switch here or there. I just treat it like any other piece of suspicious hardware. Add it to the network, but set firewall rules so it can't send data outside of my LAN. If the recent TP-Link story teaches us anything, it's that you should never just assume that a product does what a vendor says it will do, or assume that it does it in a responsible or secure way. Even reputable vendors may not be a good bet if you choose to use their products past their support cycle. And that's really the thing that I hope you take away from this. Is your router still supported? Is it patched with the current firmware? If you don't know the answers to these questions, it's probably a good idea to find out. If you found this video to be helpful and would like to see more like it, please like and subscribe. I'm just getting this thing started and I could really use your help. If you would like to contribute some feedback, please engage with me in the comments below. If, like me, you're a little old school, please check out my website linked in my bio. Thanks and have an awesome day.